Hi, and welcome to This Week in Science and Technology. Now that I've developed the foundation for modern mechanics, I will turn my attention to Einstein's theory of relativity. Today, I will use modern mechanics to explain what relativity is, how Einstein developed it, why it isn't intuitive, and what's wrong with it. In the last episode, I developed length and position equations that apply to every moving system. I specifically used the translation equation to explain the motion of an inner system. I also used the forward and reflected intercept lengths to explain several distances associated with an oscillating system. The forward and reflected intercept times explain how long it takes for an oscillating system to travel their respective lengths. Before I look at Einstein's work, there's one more pair of equations I need to introduce. They are the average intercept length and time. As you might have guessed, the average intercept length is simply the average of the forward and reflected intercept lengths, and the average intercept time is the average of the forward and reflected intercept times. All of the intercept equations describe times or lengths associated with an oscillating system. There are two ways to find an average, which in mathematics is called an arithmetic mean. The first is the addition mean equation. It is a plus b divided by 2. The second, which is not as well known, is called the subtraction mean equation. It is a minus 1 half of the difference a minus b. The absolute value of one half of the difference, a minus b, is called the half difference. The addition mean equation and the subtraction mean equation are equivalent. This means that we can use either one because they will always produce the same answer. I'm going to use the subtraction mean equation, which will help us to later explain aspects of Einstein's work. Remember, an average is an average. It doesn't take on magical properties just because we find it using the subtraction mean equation instead of the addition mean equation. With our new equations developed, let's return to our familiar non-nested system relationship involving a bus and a man both placed on the street. Before we look at Einstein's derivation, I want to mention something important. In modern mechanics, the velocity of an oscillating system is generalized using the variable w. It can be replaced by the specific velocity of any oscillating system, such as c, when working with light. Einstein does not generalize his equation and instead only uses c, or the speed of light. So while I'll develop the equations using w, Einstein always uses c. Okay, let's begin. Like Einstein, we presume that at time t, the front of the moving system is at position x. So this brings us to step one. Einstein finds the length of the moving system by assuming that at time t equals zero, the rear of the moving system is at the origin. This means that the front of the moving system is at x prime. And as explained in the last episode, this repositioning allows us to use x prime as the length of the moving system, which we'll need for the forward and reflected intercept equations. Step two is to find the forward and reflected intercept times. He does this when he invokes his tau function. Notice that when Einstein calls his tau function in three different places, he uses the forward and reflected intercept times. Step three, although Einstein didn't understand this step, the tau function returns the average intercept time. As I've discussed, the average intercept time has nothing to do with the position of a moving system. It describes the average of the forward and reflected intercept times, both of which are associated with an oscillating system. Einstein fails to recognize this for three reasons. First, he uses the subtraction mean equation, which is not the common equation we use to find an average. Second, he does not properly invoke the tau function, mistreating it as an equation. Specifically, he replaces the function variable t with the forward intercept time using substitution instead of properly invoking the function as he had done earlier in his paper. This is extremely subtle. And while he gets the right answer here, it will lead to his final tau equation being incorrect, a point I discuss at length in my book, Disruptive. Third, he doesn't assign the average intercept time to a variable, making it hard to see what he's doing. Step four, 
Einstein multiplies the average intercept time by c to get the average intercept length. Those are a lot of steps just to arrive at the average intercept length. Fortunately, we can check our work by using the addition mean equation. Simply add the forward and reflected intercept lengths together and divide that sum by 2. You'll see you get the same answer. So now you understand something that Einstein didn't, and this is where he now makes several critical mistakes. First, he forgets that he used the translation equation in reverse to find the length of the moving system. And the moving system was at position x at time t. He conveniently disregards this fact. Second, Einstein fails to recognize the explicit use of the oscillating system as a second moving system. So when he finds the average intercept time and length, he doesn't associate them with the oscillating system. That's because in relativity, the oscillating system doesn't exist, even though he uses equations associated with one. Third, Einstein doesn't understand the tau function. He mistreats it as an equation, which it is not, and he fails to understand what it does, which is to find the average intercept time. Because he doesn't realize he has an average intercept time, he fails to recognize that when he multiplies it by c, he gets the average intercept length. The average intercept equations are associated with an oscillating system, which, as I mentioned earlier, Einstein does not use. At this point, Einstein has a moving system, which he no longer associates with the translation equation, and he has average intercept equations, which he doesn't associate with an odd oscillating system. So he has to put the pieces together. Relativity comes from Einstein associating the average intercept length and time equations with the moving inner system. This forced relationship is also why relativity requires concepts like time dilation and length contraction. This is simply Einstein's attempt to make sense of something that is fundamentally wrong. Now there's one final step because these aren't Einstein's final equations. Einstein believes that his equations are replacements for the translation equation. He simply adjusts all of his equations by multiplying everything by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is how he arrives at his final equations and why he believes his theory is a replacement for classical mechanics. Modern mechanics does not replace the translation equation. The inner system always moves according to translation, and the average intercept equations explain the behaviors associated with an oscillating system. Einstein's conceptual mistakes are what makes relativity unique, difficult, and non-intuitive. When you properly describe motion using an inner system, an outer system, and an oscillating system, as I've done with modern mechanics, you not only get a theory that's easier to understand, but you get equations that perform better. If you're interested in understanding other aspects of Einstein's work, including other subtle mistakes that I did not cover today, or you're interested in diving further into modern mechanics, I invite you to take a look at my website or my book, Disruptive, Rewriting the Rules of Physics. In the meantime, I hope that you'll continue to share my videos and website with your friends and colleagues. Until next time, I'm Stephen B. Bryant, and that's This Week in Science and Technology.